Chinese Buddhism or Han Buddhism has shaped Chinese culture in a wide variety of areas including art, politics, literature, philosophy, medicine, and material culture. The translation of a large body of Indian Buddhist scriptures into Chinese and the inclusion of these translations together with works composed in China into a printed canon had far-reaching implications for the dissemination of Buddhism throughout the Chinese cultural sphere, including Korea, Japan, Taiwan and Vietnam. Chinese Buddhism is also marked by the interaction between Indian religions, Chinese religion, and Taoism. History Topic: Han Dynasty 206 BCE to 220 CE. Topic: Earliest historical arrivals. Various legends tell of the presence of Buddhism in Chinese soil in very ancient times. Nonetheless, the scholarly consensus is that Buddhism first came to China in the 1st century CE during the Han Dynasty through missionaries from India. Generations of scholars have debated whether Buddhist missionaries first reached Han China via the maritime or overland routes of the Silk Road. The maritime route hypothesis, favored by Liang Qichao and Paul Pelliot, proposed that Buddhism was originally practiced in southern China, the Yangtze River and Wai River region, where Prince Ying of Chu (present-day Jiangsu) was jointly worshiping the Yellow Emperor Laozi and Buddha in 65 CE. The overland route hypothesis, favored by Tang Yongtong, proposed that Buddhism disseminated through Central Asia, in particular, the Kushan Empire, which was often known in ancient Chinese sources as Da Yuzi, Great Yuzi, after the founding tribe. According to this hypothesis, Buddhism was first practiced in China in the western regions and the Han capital Luoyang present-day Henan, where Emperor Ming of Han established the White Horse Temple in 68 CE. In 2004, Rong Xinjiang, a history professor at Peking University, re-examined the overland and maritime hypotheses through a multidisciplinary review of recent discoveries and research, including the Gandharan Buddhist texts, and concluded, The view that Buddhism was transmitted to China by the sea route comparatively lacks convincing and supporting materials, and some arguments are not sufficiently rigorous. Based on the existing historical texts and the archaeological iconographic materials discovered since the 1980s, particularly the 1st century Buddhist manuscripts recently found in Afghanistan, the commentator believes that the most plausible theory is that Buddhism reached China from the greater Yuzi of northwest India and took the land route to reach Han China. After entering into China, Buddhism blended with early Taoism and Chinese traditional esoteric arts and its iconography received blind worship. Topic. Traditional accounts A number of popular accounts in historical Chinese literature have led to the popularity of certain legends regarding the introduction of Buddhism into China. According to the most popular one, Emperor Ming of Han 28 CE precipitated the introduction of Buddhist teachings into China. The early 3rd to early 5th century Mao Zilihuolin first records this legend, in olden days Emperor Ming saw in a dream a god whose body had the brilliance of the sun and who flew before his palace, and he rejoiced exceedingly at this. The next day he asked his officials, What god is this? The scholar Fu Yi said, Your subject has heard it said that in India there is somebody who has attained the Tao and who is called Buddha, he flies in the air, his body had the brilliance of the sun, this must be that god. The emperor then sent an envoy to Tianzhu southern India to inquire about the teachings of the Buddha. Buddhist scriptures were said to have been returned to China on the backs of white horses, after which White Horse Temple was named. Two Indian monks also returned with them, named Dharmaratna and Kasyapa Matanga. An 8th-century Chinese fresco at Mogo Caves near Dunhuang in Gansu portrays Emperor Wu of Han worshipping statues of a golden man. Golden men brought in 121 BCE by a great Han general in his campaigns against the nomads. However, neither the Shiji nor Book of Han Histories of Emperor Wu mentions a golden Buddhist statue. Compare Emperor Ming above. Topic: The first translations. The first documented translation of Buddhist scriptures from various Indian languages into Chinese occurs in 148 CE with the arrival of the Parthian prince turned monk and Shigao, ch. 
and Shi Gao. He worked to establish Buddhist temples in Luoyang and organized the translation of Buddhist scriptures into Chinese, testifying to the beginning of a wave of Central Asian Buddhist proselytism that was to last several centuries. And Shi Gao translated Buddhist texts on basic doctrines, meditation, and Abhidharma. And Zan, ch. And Zan a Parthian layman who worked alongside in Shigao, also translated an early Mahayana Buddhist text on the Bodhisattva path. Mahayana Buddhism was first widely propagated in China by the Kushan monk Lokaksima ch. G. Lu Jia Chen active c. 164–186 CE, who came from the ancient Buddhist kingdom of Gandhara. Lokaksima translated important Mahayana sutras such as the Astasahasrika Prajnaparamita Sutra, as well as rare, early Mahayana sutras on topics such as samadhi, and meditation on the Buddha Aksobhya. These translations from Lokaksima continue to give insight into the early period of Mahayana Buddhism. This corpus of texts often includes emphasizes ascetic practices and forest dwelling, and absorption in states of meditative concentration. Paul Harrison has worked on some of the texts that are arguably the earliest versions we have of the Mahayana Sutras, those translated into Chinese in the last half of the 2nd century CE by the Indo-Scythian translator Lokaksima. Harrison points to the enthusiasm in the Lokaksima Sutra corpus for the extra-ascetic practices, for dwelling in the forest, and above all for states of meditative absorption samadhi. Meditation and meditative states seem to have occupied a central place in early Mahayana, certainly because of their spiritual efficacy but also because they may have given access to fresh revelations and inspiration. <laughs> early Buddhist schools During the early period of Chinese Buddhism, the Indian early Buddhist schools recognized as important, and whose texts were studied, were the Dharmaguptakas, Mahisasakas, Kasyapayas, Sarvastivadins, and the Mahasamgikas. The Dharmaguptakas made more efforts than any other sect to spread Buddhism outside India, to areas such as Afghanistan, Central Asia, and China, and they had great success in doing so. Therefore, most countries which adopted Buddhism from China, also adopted the Dharmaguptaka Vinaya and ordination lineage for Bixus and Bixunus. According to A.K. Warder, in some ways in those East Asian countries, the Dharmaguptaka sect can be considered to have survived to the present. Warder further writes that the Dharmaguptakas can be credited with effectively establishing Chinese Buddhism during the early period. It was the Dharmaguptakas who were the first Buddhists to establish themselves in Central Asia. They appear to have carried out a vast circling movement along the trade routes from Aparanta northwest into Iran and at the same time into Adiyana the Suvasta Valley, north of Gandhara, which became one of their main centers. After establishing themselves as far west as Parthia they followed the Silk Route, the east-west axis of Asia, eastwards across Central Asia and on into China, where they effectively established Buddhism in the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD. The Mahisasakas and Kasyapayas appear to have followed them across Asia into China. For the earlier period of Chinese Buddhism it was the Dharmaguptakas who constituted the main and most influential school, and even later their Vinaya remained the basis of the discipline there. Topic. Six dynasties 220 to 589. Topic. Early translation methods Initially, Buddhism in China faced a number of difficulties in becoming established. The concept of monasticism and the aversion to social affairs seemed to contradict the long-established norms and standards established in Chinese society. Some even declared that Buddhism was harmful to the authority of the state, that Buddhist monasteries contributed nothing to the economic prosperity of China, that Buddhism was barbaric and undeserving of Chinese cultural traditions. However, Buddhism was often associated with Taoism in its ascetic meditative tradition, and for this reason a concept matching system was used by some early Indian translators to adapt native Buddhist ideas onto Taoist ideas and terminology. Buddhism appealed to Chinese intellectuals and elites, and the development of gentry Buddhism was sought as an alternative to Confucianism and Taoism, since Buddhism's emphasis on morality and ritual appealed to Confucianists and the desire to cultivate inner wisdom appealed to Taoists. Gentry Buddhism was a medium of introduction for the beginning of Buddhism in China, it gained imperial and courtly support. By the early 5th century Buddhism was established in South China. 
During this time, Indian monks continued to travel along the Silk Road to teach Buddhism, and translation work was primarily done by foreign monks rather than Chinese. Topic: The arrival of Kumarajiva 334 to 413 CE. When the famous monk Kumarajiva was captured during the Chinese conquest of the Buddhist kingdom of Kucha, he was imprisoned for many years. When he was released in AD 401, he immediately took a high place in Chinese Buddhism and was appraised as a great master from the West. He was especially valued by Emperor Yao Xing of the state of later Qin, who gave him an honorific title and treated him like a god. Kumarajiva revolutionized Chinese Buddhism with his high-quality translations from AD 402 to 413, which are still praised for their flowing smoothness, clarity of meaning, subtlety, and literary skill. Due to the efforts of Kumarajiva, Buddhism in China became not only recognized for its practice methods, but also as high philosophy and religion. The arrival of Kumarajiva also set a standard for Chinese translations of Buddhist texts, effectively doing away with previous concept matching systems. The translations of Kumarajiva have often remained more popular than those of other translators. Among the most well-known are his translations of the Diamond Sutra, the Amitabha Sutra, the Lotus Sutra, the Vimalakirti Nirdesa Sutra, the Mulamadamakakarika, and the Astasahasrika Prajnaparamita Sutra. Topic. A completed Sutra Pitaka Around the time of Kumarajiva, the four major Sanskrit agamas were also translated into Chinese. Each of the agamas was translated independently by a different Indian monk. These agamas comprise the only other complete surviving Sutra Pitaka, which is generally comparable to the Pali Sutta Pitaka of Theravada Buddhism. The teachings of the Sutra Pitaka are usually considered to be one of the earliest teachings on Buddhism and a core text of the early Buddhist schools in China. It is noteworthy that before the modern period, these agama were seldom if ever used by Buddhist communities, due to their Hinayana attribution, as Chinese Buddhism was already avowedly Mahayana in persuasion. <laughs> early Chinese Buddhist traditions Due to the wide proliferation of Buddhist texts available in Chinese and the large number of foreign monks who came to teach Buddhism in China, much like new branches growing from a main tree trunk, various specific focus traditions emerged. Among the most influential of these was the practice of Pure Land Buddhism established by Wei Yuan, which focused on Amitabha Buddha and his western Pure Land of Sukhavati. Other early traditions were the Tiantai, Huayan and the Vinaya school. Such schools were based upon the primacy of the Lotus Sutra, the Avatamsaka Sutra, and the Dharmaguptaka Vinaya, respectively, along with supplementary sutras and commentaries. The Tiantai founder Zhiyi wrote several works that became important and widely read meditation manuals in China such as the Concise Samatha Vipassana and the Great Samatha Vipassana. Southern and Northern Dynasties 420 to 589 and Sui Dynasty 589 to 618 CE Topic Chan pointing directly to the mind In the 5th century, the Chan Zen teachings began in China, traditionally attributed to the Buddhist monk Bodhidharma, a legendary figure. The school heavily utilized the principles found in the Lankavatara Sutra, a sutra utilizing the teachings of Yogacara and those of Tathagatagarbha, and which teaches the one vehicle SKT. Ekayana to Buddhahood. In the early years, the teachings of Chan were therefore referred to as the one vehicle school. The earliest masters of the Chan school were called Lankavatara masters, for their mastery of practice according to the principles of the Lankavatara Sutra. The principal teachings of Chan were later often known for the use of so-called encounter stories and koans, and the teaching methods used in them. Nan Y. Chin identifies the Lankavatara Sutra and the Diamond Sutra Prajnaparamita Sutra as the principal texts of the Chan school, and summarizes the principles succinctly. The Zen teaching was a separate transmission outside the scriptural teachings that did not posit any written texts as sacred. Zen pointed directly to the human mind to enable people to see their real nature and become Buddhas. Topic: <tang>, Tang Dynasty 618 to 907 CE. 
Topic: <laughs> Zanzang's journey to the west. During the early Tang dynasty, between 629 and 645, the monk Zanzang journeyed to India and visited over 100 kingdoms, and wrote extensive and detailed reports of his findings, which have subsequently become important for the study of India during this period. During his travels he visited holy sites, learned the lore of his faith, and studied with many famous Buddhist masters, especially at the famous center of Buddhist learning at Nalanda University. When he returned, he brought with him some 657 Sanskrit texts. Zanzang also returned with relics, statues, and Buddhist paraphernalia loaded onto 22 horses. With the emperor's support, he set up a large translation bureau in Chang'an present-day Xi'an, drawing students and collaborators from all over East Asia. He is credited with the translation of some 1,330 fascicles of scriptures into Chinese. His strongest personal interest in Buddhism was in the field of Yogacara, or consciousness only. The force of his own study, translation and commentary of the texts of these traditions initiated the development of the Fashang school in East Asia. Although the school itself did not thrive for a long time, its theories regarding perception, consciousness, karma, rebirth, etc. found their way into the doctrines of other more successful schools. Zanzang's closest and most eminent student was Kuiji who became recognized as the first patriarch of the Fashang school. Zanzang's logic, as described by Kuiji, was often misunderstood by scholars of Chinese Buddhism because they lacked the necessary background in Indian logic. Another important disciple was the Korean monk Wanchuk. Zanzang's translations were especially important for the transmission of Indian texts related to the Yogacara school. He translated central Yogacara texts such as the Samdhanirmocana Sutra and the Yogacarapum Sastra, as well as important texts such as the Mahaprajñaparamita Sutra and the Bhaisajyagoravadaryaprabharaha Sutra, Medicine Buddha Sutra He is credited with writing or compiling the Cheng Waishi Lun Sastra as composed from multiple commentaries on Vasubandhu's Trimsika Vijnaptamatrata. His translation of the Heart Sutra became and remains the standard in all East Asian Buddhist sects. The proliferation of these texts expanded the Chinese Buddhist canon significantly with high-quality translations of some of the most important Indian Buddhist texts. Topic. Caves, art, and technology The popularization of Buddhism in this period is evident in the many scripture-filled caves and structures surviving from this period. The Mogo Caves near Dunhuang in Gansu Province, the Longmen Grottoes near Luoyang in Henan and the Yungang Grottoes near Datong in Shaanxi are the most renowned examples from the northern, Sui and Tang dynasties. The Lashan giant Buddha, carved out of a hillside in the 8th century during the Tang dynasty and looking down on the confluence of three rivers, is still the largest stone Buddha statue in the world. Monks and pious laymen spread Buddhist concepts through storytelling and preaching from sutra texts. These oral presentations were written down as bianwen, transformation stories, which influenced the writing of fiction by their new ways of telling stories combining prose and poetry. Popular legends in this style included Mulian rescues his mother, in which a monk descends into hell in a show of filial piety. Making duplications of Buddhist texts was considered to bring meritorious karma. Printing from individually carved wooden blocks and from clay or metal movable type proved much more efficient than hand copying and eventually eclipsed it. The Diamond Sutra of 868 CE, a Buddhist scripture discovered in 1907 inside the Mogo Caves, is the first dated example of block printing. Topic. Arrival of Esoteric Buddhism The Kayuan's three great enlightened masters, Subhakarasimha, Varabodhi, and Amogavajra, established esoteric Buddhism in China from AD 716 to 720 during the reign of Emperor Zanzang. They came to Daxing Shanxi, Da Xing Shanxi Great Propagating Goodness Temple, which was the predecessor of Temple of the Great Enlightener Mahavarokana. Daxing Shanxi was established in the ancient capital Chang'an, today's Xi'an, and became one of the four great centers of scripture translation supported by the imperial court. They had translated many Buddhist scriptures, sutra and tantra, from Sanskrit to Chinese. They had also assimilated the prevailing teachings of China, Taoism and Confucianism, with Buddhism, and had further evolved the practice of the esoteric school. 
They brought to the Chinese a mysterious, dynamic, and magical teaching, which included mantra formula and detailed rituals to protect a person or an empire, to affect a person's fate after death, and, particularly popular, to bring rain in times of drought. It is not surprising, then, that all three masters were well received by the Emperor Tang Zanzong, and their teachings were quickly taken up at the Tang court and among the elite. Mantrayana altars were installed in temples in the capital, and by the time of Emperor Tang Daizong R. 762 its influence among the upper classes outstripped that of Taoism. However, relations between Amogavajra and Daizong were especially good. In life the emperor favored Amogavajra with titles and gifts, and when the master died in 774, he honored his memory with a stupa, or funeral monument. The esoteric Buddhist lineage of China and almost all of Buddhism in China at the time was nearly wiped out by the Emperor Tang Wuzong, leading to the great anti-Buddhist persecution. Historically, the Hanmi Chinese esoteric school of Buddhism was also thought to have been lost when Emperor Tang Wuzong banned the teaching. Huiguo, the last known disciple of Amogavajra, left China with Kakai traveling to Japan to establish the Japanese esoteric school of Buddhism, later known as Shingon. A disciple of Amogavajra, Huisu, secretly continued the lineage in China and has been passed on through one master per generation. In 1989 the 48th Maha Acharya Master Huling of the Chinese esoteric school passed the teaching to the 49th lineage bearer master Yu Tianjian who revived the school. The esoteric Buddhist lineages transmitted to Japan under the auspices of the monks Kakai and Seicho, later formulated the teachings transmitted to them to create the Shingon sect and the Tendai sect. <laughs> Tang State Repression of 845 There were several components that led to opposition of Buddhism. One factor is the foreign origins of Buddhism, unlike Taoism and Confucianism. Han Yu wrote. Buddha was a man of the barbarians who did not speak the language of China and wore clothes of a different fashion. His sayings did not concern the ways of our ancient kings, nor did his manner of dress conform to their laws. He understood neither the duties that bind sovereign and subject, nor the affections of father and son." Other components included the Buddhists' withdrawal from society, since the Chinese believed that Chinese people should be involved with family life. Wealth, tax exemption status and power of the Buddhist temples and monasteries also annoyed many critics. As mentioned earlier, persecution came during the reign of Emperor Wuzong in the Tang dynasty. Wuzong was said to hate the sight of Buddhist monks, who he thought were tax evaders. In 845, he ordered the destruction of 4,600 Buddhist monasteries and 40,000 temples. More than 400,000 Buddhist monks and nuns then became peasants liable to the two taxes grain and cloth. Wuzong cited that Buddhism was an alien religion, which is the reason he also persecuted the Christians in China. David Greber argues that Buddhist institutions had accumulated so much precious metals which the government needed to secure the money supply. Ancient Chinese Buddhism never fully recovered from the persecution. Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period 907 The Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period simplified Chinese, Wu Dai Shi Guo traditional Chinese, Wu Dai Shi Guo pinyin, Wu Dai Shi Guo was an era of political upheaval in China, between the fall of the Tang Dynasty and the founding of the Song Dynasty. During this period, five dynasties quickly succeeded one another in the north, and more than twelve independent states were established, mainly in the south. However, only ten are traditionally listed, hence the era's name, Ten Kingdoms. Some historians, such as Bo Yang, count eleven, including Yan and Qi, but not northern Han, viewing it as simply a continuation of later Han. This era also led to the founding of the Liao dynasty. After the fall of the Tang dynasty, China was without effective central control during the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period. China was divided into several autonomous regions. Support for Buddhism was limited to a few areas. The Hua Yen and Tian Tai schools suffered from the changing circumstances, since they had depended on imperial support. The collapse of Tang society also deprived the aristocratic classes of wealth and influence, which meant a further drawback for Buddhism. Shengshu's Northern Chan School and Henshui's Southern Chan School didn't survive the changing circumstances. 
Nevertheless, Chan emerged as the dominant stream within Chinese Buddhism, but with various schools developing various emphasizes in their teachings, due to the regional orientation of the period. The Fayan school, named after Fa Yen Wen I became the dominant school in the southern kingdoms of Nantang Yangshi, Changshi, and Wuyue Topic: <laughs> Song Dynasty The Song dynasty is divided into two distinct periods, the Northern Song and Southern Song. During the Northern Song, Chinese, Bay Song the Song capital was in the northern city of Bianjing and the dynasty controlled most of Inner China. The Southern Song Chinese, Nan Song refers to the period after the Song lost control of northern China to the Jin dynasty. During this time, the Song court retreated south of the Yangtze River and established their capital at Lin'an now Hangzhou. Although the Song dynasty had lost control of the traditional birthplace of Chinese civilization along the Yellow River, the Song economy was not in ruins, as the Southern Song Empire contained 60% of China's population and a majority of the most productive agricultural land. During the Song dynasty, Chan, Chan was used by the government to strengthen its control over the country, and Chan grew to become the largest sect in Chinese Buddhism. An ideal picture of the Chan of the Tang period was produced, which served the legacy of this newly acquired status. In the early Song dynasty, Chan Pure Land syncretism became a dominant movement. Buddhist ideology began to merge with Confucianism and Taoism, due in part to the use of existing Chinese philosophical terms in the translation of Buddhist scriptures. Various Confucian scholars of the Song dynasty, including Zhu Xi WG, Chu Xi, sought to redefine Confucianism as Neo-Confucianism. During the Song dynasty, in 1021 CE, it is recorded that there were 458,855 Buddhist monks and nuns actively living in monasteries. The total number of monks was 397,615, while the total number of nuns was recorded as 61,240. Topic. Yuan Dynasty 1279 During the Yuan Dynasty, the Mongol emperors made esoteric Buddhism an official religion of China, and Tibetan lamas were given patronage at the court. A common perception was that this patronage of lamas caused corrupt forms of Tantra to become widespread. When the Mongol Yuan dynasty was overthrown and the Ming dynasty was established, the Tibetan lamas were expelled from the court, and this form of Buddhism was denounced as not being an orthodox path. <laughs> Ming dynasty 1368 According to Weinstein, by the Ming dynasty, the Chan school was so firmly established that all monks were affiliated with either the Linji school or the Kaodong school. During the Ming dynasty, Hanshan Deking was one of the great reformers of Chinese Buddhism. Like many of his contemporaries, he advocated the dual practice of the Chan and Pure Land methods, and advocated the use of the Nianfo mindfulness of the Buddha, technique to purify the mind for the attainment of self-realization. He also directed practitioners in the use of mantras as well as scripture reading. He was also renowned as a lecturer and commentator, and admired for his strict adherence to the precepts. According to Zhang Wu, for Chan masters in this period, such as Hanshan Deking, training through self cultivation was encouraged, and cliched or formulaic instructions were despised. Eminent monks who practiced meditation and asceticism without proper Dharma transmission were acclaimed for having acquiring wisdom without a teacher. Topic. Qing Dynasty 1644 The Qing court endorsed the Gelakpa school of Tibetan Buddhism. Early in the Taiping Rebellion, the Taiping rebels targeted Buddhism. In the Battle of Nanjing 1853, the Taiping army butchered thousands of monks in Nanjing. But from the middle of the Taiping Rebellion, Taiping leaders took a more moderate approach, demanding that monks should have licenses. Around 1900, Buddhists from other Asian countries showed a growing interest in Chinese Buddhism. Anagarika Dharmapala visited Shanghai in 1893, intending to make a tour of China, to arouse the Chinese Buddhists to send missionaries to India to restore Buddhism there, and then to start a propaganda throughout the whole world, but eventually limiting his stay to Shanghai. 
Japanese Buddhist missionaries were active in China in the beginning of the 20th century. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Republic of China established 1912. The modernization of China led to the end of the Chinese Empire, and the installation of the Republic of China, which lasted on the mainland until the Communist Revolution and the installation of the People's Republic of China in 1949 which also led to the ROC government's exodus to Taiwan. Under influence of the Western culture, attempts were being made to revitalize Chinese Buddhism. Most notable were the humanistic Buddhism of Taishu, and the revival of Chinese Chan by Xu Yun. Xu Yun is generally regarded as one of the most influential Buddhist teachers of the 19th and 20th centuries. Other influential teachers in the early 20th century included Pure Land Buddhist Yin Guang, Yin Guang and artist Hong Yi. Layman Zhao Puchu worked much on the revival. Until 1949, monasteries were built in the Southeast Asian countries, for example by monks of Guanghua Monastery, to spread Chinese Buddhism. Presently, Guanghua Monastery has seven branches in the Malay Peninsula and Indonesia. Several Chinese Buddhist teachers left mainland China during the Communist Revolution, and settled in Hong Kong and Taiwan. Master Sing Yun is the founder of Fo Guangshan Monastery and lay organization the Buddha's Light International Association. Born in Jiangsu Province in mainland China, he entered the Sangha at the age of 12, and came to Taiwan in 1949. He founded Fo Guang Shan Monastery in 1967, and the Buddha's Light International Association in 1992. These are among the largest monastic and lay Buddhist organizations in Taiwan from the late 20th to early 21st centuries. He advocates humanistic Buddhism, which the broad modern Chinese Buddhist progressive attitude towards the religion. Master Sheng Yen was the founder of the Dharma Drum Mountain, a Buddhist organization based in Taiwan. During his time in Taiwan, Sheng Yen was well known as one of the progressive Buddhist teachers who sought to teach Buddhism in a modern and Western-influenced world. Master Wei Chua was born in 1928 in Sichuan, mainland China, and ordained in Taiwan. In 1982, he founded Lin Quan Temple in Taipei County and became known for his teaching on Chan practices by offering many lectures and seven-day Chan retreats. People's Republic of China established 1949. Topic: <inaudible> Chinese Buddhist Association. Unlike Catholicism and other branches of Christianity, there was no organization in China that embraced all monastics in China, nor even all monastics within the same sect. Traditionally, each monastery was autonomous, with authority resting on each respective abbot. In 1953, the Chinese Buddhist Association was established at a meeting with 121 delegates in Beijing. The meeting also elected a chairman, four honorary chairmen, seven vice chairmen, a secretary general, three deputy secretaries general, 18 members of a standing committee, and 93 directors. The four elected honorary chairmen were the Dalai Lama, the Panchen Lama, the Grand Lama of Inner Mongolia, and Venerable Master Xu Yun. Topic. Reform and opening up, Second Buddhist Revival Since the reform and opening up period in the 1970s, a new revival of Chinese Buddhism has been taking place. Ancient Buddhist temples are being restored and new Buddhist temples are being built. Chinese Buddhist temples, administrated by local governments, have become increasingly commercialized by sales of tickets, incense, or other religious items, soliciting donations, and even the listing of temples on the stock market and local governments obtain large incomes. In October 2012, the State Administration for Religious Affairs announced a crackdown on religious profiteering. Many sites have done enough repairs and have already cancelled ticket fares and are receiving voluntary donation instead. The 108 meter high Guan Yin of the South Sea of Sanya statue was enshrined on April 24, 2005, with the participation of 108 eminent monks from various Buddhist groups from mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, and tens of thousands of pilgrims. The delegation also included monks from the Theravada and Tibetan Buddhist traditions. China is one of the countries with the most of the world's highest statues, many of which are Buddhist statues. 
In April 2006 China organized the World Buddhist Forum, an event now held every two years, and in March 2007 the government banned mining on Buddhist sacred mountains. In May of the same year, in Changzhou, the world's tallest pagoda was built and opened. In March 2008 the Taiwan-based organizations Su Kai Foundation and Fo Guang Shan were approved to open a branch in mainland China. Currently, there are about 1.3 billion Chinese living in the People's Republic. Surveys have found that around 18.2% to 20% of this population adheres to Buddhism. Furthermore, Pew found that another 21% of the Chinese population followed Chinese folk religions that incorporated elements of Buddhism. Topic. Chinese Buddhism in Southeast Asia Chinese Buddhism is mainly practiced by ethnic Han Chinese in Southeast Asia. Topic. Chinese Buddhism in the West The first Chinese master to teach Westerners in North America was Suan Hua, who taught Chan and other traditions of Chinese Buddhism in San Francisco during the early 1960s. He went on to found the City of 10,000 Buddhas, a monastery and retreat center located on a 237-acre property near Ukiah, California. Chuang Yen Monastery and Shi Lai Temple are also large centers. Sheng Yen also founded Dharma centers in the USA. Topic: Sects. Topic: Esoteric Buddhism. In China and countries with large Chinese populations such as Taiwan, Malaysia, and Singapore, esoteric Buddhism is most commonly referred to as the Chinese term Mizong, Mizong or esoteric school. Traditions of Chinese esoteric Buddhism are most commonly referred to as referred as Tangmi, Tang, Tang Dynasty Esoterica, or Hanshuan Mizong, Han Chuan Mizong, Han Transmission Esoteric School, Hanmi Hanmi for short, or Dongmi, Dong, Eastern Esoterica, separating itself from Tibetan and Nuar traditions. These schools more or less share the same doctrines as Shingon, and in some cases, Chinese monks have traveled to Japan to train and to be given esoteric transmission at Mount Koya and Mount Hiei. <laughs> Unrecognized sects There are many sects and organizations proclaiming a Buddhist identity and pursuit fo or fu, awakening, enlightenment that are not recognized as legitimate Buddhism by the Chinese Buddhist Association and the government of the People's Republic of China. This group includes Guanyin Buddhism Awakening Teaching Guanyin Fu Jiao Guanyin Fo Jiao or Guanyin Church Guanyin Wei Guanyin Wei True Awakening Tradition Zhen Fu Zong Zhen Fo Zong Topic Teachings Topic. Basic concepts Chinese Buddhism incorporates elements of traditional Buddhism and Taoism. Common practices include Worship of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas Through offerings of incense, flowers, food, etc. Offerings to Devas who reside in the heavenly realm Paying respect to dead ancestors during Qingming and Hungry Ghost Festival Performance of religious ceremonies to help souls of the deceased find peace Chaodu forming affinities with other people, through gifts and acts of service Yuanfen vegetarianism, monastics are required to be vegetarian, devout laity are also often vegetarian Compassion towards all living beings through activities such as life release Common beliefs include Existence of gods, ghosts and hell realm Reincarnation, Chao Sheng or more technically, rebirth, according to one's karma Karmic retribution, Bao Ying ethically cause and effect Topic. Incense burning During the Zhou dynasty, Chinese believed that smoke resulting from burning would act as a bridge between the human world and the spirits. When Buddhism reached China, this wood evolved into sandalwood incense, which were originally burned by Indian Buddhists so they could concentrate better. The philosophy behind incense burning is to sacrifice oneself for the benefit of others, the true spirit of Buddhism. 
It can be seen that incense burning as it is known today is a merger between Chinese culture and Buddhist culture. <laughs> Laypeople in Chinese Buddhism In Chinese Buddhism, lay practitioners have traditionally played an important role, and lay practice of Buddhism has had similar tendencies to those of monastic Buddhism in China. Many historical biographies of lay Buddhists are available, which give a clear picture of their practices and role in Chinese Buddhism. In addition to these numerous biographies, there are accounts from Jesuit missionaries such as Matteo Ricci which provide extensive and revealing accounts to the degree Buddhism penetrated elite and popular culture in China. Traditional practices such as meditation, mantra recitation, mindfulness of Amitabha Buddha, asceticism, and vegetarianism were all integrated into the belief systems of ordinary people. It is known from accounts in the Ming dynasty that lay practitioners often engaged in practices from both the Pure Land and Chan traditions, as well as the study of the Buddhist sutras. The Heart Sutra and the Diamond Sutra were the most popular, followed by the Lotus Sutra and the Avatamsaka Sutra. Laypeople were also commonly devoted to the practice of mantras, and the Maha Karuna Dharani and the Kundi Dharani were very popular. Robert Gemello has also observed that in Chinese Buddhist communities, the esoteric practices of Kundi enjoyed popularity among both the populace and the elite. Mahayana figures such as Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, Kasitagarbha Bodhisattva, Amitabha Buddha, and the Medicine Buddha, were all widely known and revered. Beliefs in karma and rebirth were held at all levels of Chinese society, and pilgrimages to well known monasteries and the Four Holy Mountains of China were undertaken by monastics and lay practitioners alike. Festivals These are the holy days that Chinese Buddhists celebrate by visiting temples to make offerings of prayers, incense, fruits, flowers, and donations. On such days they observe the moral precepts very strictly as well as a full day's vegetarian diet, a practice originally from China. The dates given are based on the Chinese calendar system so that 8.4 means the eighth day of the fourth month in Chinese calendar and so on. 8.12 Enlightenment Day of Sakyamuni Buddha 1.1 Birthday of Maitreya Buddha 9.1 Birthday of Sakra, Lord of the Devas 8.2 Renunciation Day of Sakyamuni Buddha 15.2 Mahapurnirvana Day of Sakyamuni Buddha 19.2 Birthday of Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara Guan Yin 21.2 Birthday of Bodhisattva Samantabhadra 4.4 Birthday of Bodhisattva Manjusri 8.4 Birthday of Sakyamuni Buddha 15.4 Vesak Day 13.5 Birthday of Bodhisattva Sangarama QIE Lan 3.6 Birthday of Skanda 19.6. Enlightenment Day of Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara 13.7. Birthday of Bodhisattva Mahasthamaprapta 15.7. Alambana Festival Ghost Festival 24.7. Birthday of Bodhisattva Nagarjuna 30.7. Birthday of Bodhisattva Kasitagarbha 22.8. Birthday of Dipamkara Buddha an ancient Buddha 19.9. Renunciation Day of Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara 30.9. Birthday of Bhisajyaguru Buddha Medicine Buddha 5.10. Anniversary of the Death of Bodhidharma 17.11. Birthday of Amitabha Buddha Topic See also Topic Notes Topic References Topic Citations Topic Sources Topic Further reading Topic History Nan Y. Chin 1998, Basic Buddhism, Exploring Buddhism and Zen, translated by J.C. Cleary, Red Wheel Weiser Nan Y. Chin 1995, The Story of Chinese Zen, translated by Thomas Cleary, Charles E. Tuttle Company Tansen Sen 2003, Buddhism, Diplomacy, and Trade, The Realignment of Sino-Indian Relations, 600 -1400, Association for Asian Studies and University of Hawaii Press Shinko Mochizuki, Leo M. Pruden, Trans, 1999. Pure Land Buddhism in China, A Doctrinal History, Chapter 1, A General Survey. In, Pacific World Journal, 3rd Series, No. 1, 91-103. Archived from the original Shinko Mochizuki, Leo M. Pruden, Trans, 2001. 
Pure Land Buddhism in China, A Doctrinal History, Chapter 2, The Earliest Period, Chapter 3, Wei Yuan of Mount Lu, and Chapter 4, The Translation of Texts Spurious Scriptures. In, Pacific World Journal, 3rd Series, No. 3, 241-275. Archived from the original Shinko Mochizuki, Leo M. Pruden, Trans, 2002. Pure Land Buddhism in China, A Doctrinal History, Chapter 5, The Early Pure Land Faith, Southern China, and Chapter 6, The Early Pure Land Faith, Northern China. In, Pacific World Journal, 3rd Series, No. 4, 259-279. Archived from the original Shinko Mochizuki, Leo M. Pruden, Trans, 2000. Pure Land Buddhism in China, A Doctrinal History, Chapter 7, Tan Luan. In, Pacific World Journal, 3rd Series, No. 2, 149-165. Archived from the original topic First Buddhist Revival Pitman, Don Alvin 2001, Toward a Modern Chinese Buddhism, Taishu's Reforms, University of Hawaii Press Dooru, Wei N. D., Buddhism in China and Modern Society, an introduction centering around the teachings of Taishu and Yinchen PDF, archived from the original PDF on April 2, 2013 Lancashire, Douglas N. D., Buddhism in Modern China PDF topic Contemporary Chinese Buddhism Chow, Adam Ute 2010, Religion in Contemporary China, Revitalization and Innovation, Taylor and Francis Miller, James 2006, Chinese Religions in Contemporary Societies, ABC Cleo Baumer, Christoph 2011, China's Holy Mountain, An Illustrated Journey into the Heart of Buddhism, London, I.B. Tories, ISBN 978-1-84885-700-1 Master Sheng Yen 2007, Orthodox Chinese Buddhism, translated by Douglas Gildo and Otto Chong, North Atlantic Books Monroe, Robin, Mickey Spiegel 1994. Detained in China and Tibet, a directory of political and religious prisoners. Human Rights Watch. ISBN 1564321053, list 1 list first published in, Appendix, Sects and Societies Recently or Currently Active in the PRC. Chinese Sociology and Anthropology. 21 4, 103-104, 1989. Doi 10.2753 CSA 0009 46 billion 252 million 104102. Topic: External links. China Buddhist Association. Chinese Esoteric Buddhist School. Timeline of China Buddhism. About Buddhism in China, a selected bibliography Chinese Buddhism The Confucian Impact on Chan Buddhism Buddhist Studies Net Wisdom Embodied – Chinese Buddhist and Taoist Sculpture in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, a collection catalogue from the Metropolitan Museum of Art Libraries fully available online as PDF Ru Shi Wo Wen Fu Jiao Wang Fu Jiao Bai K underscore Fu Jiao Dian Shi Tai underscore Fu Jiao Shi Pin underscore Fu Jiao Yin Jing Jie Yuan